I don't know. I mean, I kind of overslept and I still managed to get here. <laughs> You're still here. Before. All right. Good morning. We're starting so on time. time. So we have a uh, 140 Fisherman's Bend for 99,000 Lake Livingston area. Bessie. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is a, a double subdivision lot. The uh, home across the street from this property is actually for sale as a single family home. But this is a lot sale. They recently built a 2,000 square foot metal storage barn, a great big parking pad, just a the space that's available. Is it waterfront? It is water view. The home is waterfront. But uh, the property owner of that metal barn uh, would have full access to subdivision amenities. Like there are two uh, boat ramps and two fishing piers. They have full access all of that. Okay. And if we, uh, whoever buys the, the home across the street from this listing, they have the first option to purchase this. So I've got a list of people interested in just this double lot sale. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of on hand. Okay. Awesome. Okay, eleven fifteen. Clice. Mm. I don't know how you say mm. that. Clice. 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 Okay, one ninety nine. That's a e, Del. E. When two vowels go walking, the first one does the talking. Clice. <laughs> Clice. <laughs> second grade teacher. Uh huh. One ninety nine. Leslie Winsler. Del Webb is the uh, over fifty five community. Seventeen ninety six working. That's a good price. Okay, in the Bristol unit five hundred one two eighty five. Ina Perlman. Maintenance is on that one. Yes. Maintenance is eleven seventeen a month. Fifty-eight seventeen darling two eighty nine nine in Cottage Grove Angela Chain. Six Chessgate Court in Katy three thirty eight five Jessica Davis. Uh, here's the house. Is this the house? This is the waterfront house. Three ninety-five. Uh, over thirty-two hundred square feet. It was built in the late eighties. A lot of link taking care of it. It's a one-story home, but it has kind of a Texas basement where there's a rolling lot, and then there's an entire second house basically underneath it. There is a boat house. It has a boat lift, uh, a dual slips for jet skis. It's a three bedroom home. They use one of the formal areas as a public bedroom. But gorgeous views, lots of wallpaper, you know, some blue vanity fixtures, but with a little, uh, little TLC. Uh, you have the white egg home, and the neighbors are pretty spectacular. No recent arrest. I'm their neighbor. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no recent arrest. Hey, um, Bessie, I'm just curious. Yes. During the storms, does the um, lake ever get so high that it overflows anything? No, ma'am. Even in Hurricane Ike, uh, 
put the it's you know damp or or they just it just does not. Now we get wave action similar yes. to you know what you see yeah. now along the coast. This home, this particular home has steel bulk head versus wood bulk heads, which tend to get beat up. Yeah. Cars is over. Okay. Yeah. Okay, 2050 Fannin, Fannin and Fannin Station, 424-8-JR. Where is this? Uh, Fannin Station, it says. It must be a, well, no, I guess this is a love it community. That's so, pictures. I'll show you. Just what is it? Oh, it must be you. Is it? No. It says, uh, you're wow. in town. Oh, medical, medical center. center. I didn't know it was so loud. Oh, oh, you go to the train and you keep going, I think that's where it ends up. Oh, okay. Oh, really? He's saying if you take the train to NRG, it's the last stop. Yep. Okay. You work in the middle. Outside of the lake? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that lake and all is really nice. Very nice pictures. 5326 Pagewood in Larchmont, 429 Angela Chain. Fifty-four nineteen Kim in Cottage Grove, four thirty-five Rachel Solar. Hi, Hi. <laughs> One zero zero one nine Overbrook, four eighty seven Cheryl Ford. I'm coming, I'm coming. Uh, Connor will speak on this. Sorry. Okay, Overbrook. This is located in Briar Grove Park, located on the south side in the great location. Has excellent curb. I'm sorry. I read it. Yeah, okay. good. Great mm -hmm. curb appeal, fresh neutral paint, wall to wall seagrass carpeting, carpeting, hardwoods, crown molding. Um, ceiling fans, updated lighting. The underground plumbing was replaced in 2019. It has a recent HVA, HVAC system and the light is, the den has light built views of the pretty patio and backyard. And here's Briar Rose, 10042-489, also Cheryl Ford. Gray location, also on the south side, three bedrooms, two baths, fresh paint, beautiful landscaping. Additional features include high ceilings, hardwoods, double pane windows, plantation shutters, granite countertops, ceiling fans, soft neutral colors, and abundant storage. Also, the sewer pipes were replaced with PVC. Great patio and backyard. <laughs> Ten zero three eight Lock Lane in Briar Grove Park, four eighty nine Carol Lands. Thirty nine twenty three Lake Ridge Canyon Drive in Sugarland Orchard Lake Estates five fifty Headley Carpus. That's
12531 Still Harbor in Lakes on Eldridge, 599, and Bill Stein. That's it. I've had it on the market for several months. We've done a relist on that and dropped the price from 635 to 599. And it's a, if you're not familiar with Lakes on Eldridge, it's a nice energy corridor community, guard gated, has fabulous amenities for residents. No. There were some streets in Lakes on Eldridge that did, but this, this one didn't have any problems at all. Pretty backyard. And they are highly motivated. They have two homes right now. That's a great home to buy. Forty twenty Childress, uh, six hundred and ten Courtney Cole Hall. Sectional. I rent, yeah. Mm -hmm. 1617 Brannard. Bernard. Bernard. 624 Nancy Stowe. Yes. <laughs> Good time. Perfect time. <laughs> this is a great location right by the Manil. And, um, a lot of walkability close to Rice and uh, Medical Center in downtown, and it's a complete remodel for a teardown. And it's definitely priced aggressively, so I would just say the new builders will be letting them, you know, make, make it over. How much is that? 624. It's, 624. it's too high, but that's what the board wanted, so. But could a college up. kid live in there? They don't need it fixed up. <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that means yes. Yes. A college kid can live with her. Yeah. Uh, that's what I was told. Yeah. 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 It's cute that it has great things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the things I live in college. Yes. Yeah. 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 Four oh seven Reinecke, six forty nine, or Riveri. <laughs> wow, that's nice. nice. Wow, that is nice. Been chilling over there in the four fifties. There's a lot of them. <coughs> <coughs> Surprising. Mm -hmm. Is that I've been wow. showing in my really nice yard. Yard. Wow. four fifties. A lot of them have pretty nice yards. Nice. No parking. Nice. Yeah, they don't. Yeah. No yeah. parking, but lots of yard. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 You are. Where's it? Thirty-three hundred square feet. Big. Yeah, that's a lot of added construction. Two zero zero seven Cannon Gate. In Sagetown, 782, Philip Alter. Forty nine seventy eight Val Keith in Meyerland, seven ninety eight Terry Kaminsky. Built up. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> 
Gibson, 7988, Vicki Marzande. She's not here, and I'm helping her. This was a relist, but I got a contract the other day. It's a beautiful moment. So you're working a contract? I'll talk to you. Oh, one of those. That's one. Um, also, while I'm thinking about I'm looking at you, come see me after the meeting. I need days or something. Very pretty. Two story. 5539 Suzanne Cade. <coughs> 509 North Live Oak, the City of Round Top, 850, under plant. Now this is this is really interesting property. Um, it's uh, it's just three different homes, and um, you can do so much with it. But it's right there in town, so you can walk. Ride your bike, to the square, you can walk. I mean, it's real cute. A lot of options. <clears throat> kind of like a family compound. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that. Second cottage. Two bedrooms. Yeah, you can rent it and do like a Airbnb. Yeah, you can do a lot. You can rent it yeah. Very cute. And the, the grounds are beautiful. The trees are just brown so out. <laughs> Here's the third one. Yeah. North Live Oak. Thirty-six zero three Merworth, uh, eight seventy-five Karen Stowers. So this is a six-flex. Um, they're all two bedroom, one bath. They all come with one cupboard, a parking place. It's fully occupied. Um, it's not flooded. There's a little additional parking. It has a community washer dryer for many to use. What's the address? What's the address? Merworth. Merworth. 3603 Merworth. 419 Birdsall, 949 8, Vicky Barzande. Vicky's listening a lot while she's in Italy. She should go to Italy. Yeah, she represents two or three dollars. Yes. So, she has all those things like that she's never had. <laughs> Birdsall is a great street in Riceville because mm -hmm. <laughs> most of it has yeah. curb stuff. <laughs> Eleven sixty eight mosaic though. Yeah, that's a million fifty in Ravenna. Ravenna. I'll tell her the corner from my listing. You can see my listing. Audie School. The Levitt Gated uh Beehive Theater. Yeah, Audie School. 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 Yeah, there it is right there. It's like a, you know, it's like a hotel. <laughs> it's very pretty. <laughs> uh, it's um, right across from uh, from the Audi School. So like if you're on the work, 
You know the form is? Yeah. No, it's North, North Side Stove. It's North Side Stove. So if you go by Audi oh, School. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. on the freeway. Go over, you turn you left on the Audi, go down to the end, and the okay. gate is on there. Forty-four oh two Jane in Southdale, a million one fifty Headley Carpus. <coughs> we call it. Love that color coded. Oh. <laughs> Love that color coded. Come in. Come in. Pretty good shot. That is. 29 West Oak in West Oak. Okay. In three. This is an extreme value. This is a relist, but let me tell you something. When you look at the, at the front of the, the unit, there is, this is in West Oak in the back, and it's gated behind the, the front gates, and then this group of six is gated. There are, that's a nice big patio in the back. The room sizes are very generous. The ceiling heights are 12 foot ceilings down. Very big rooms, but the parking here is what's really, I think, key. That's two car garage plus an extra parking pad behind the garage. And in the front gate, there are three guest <coughs> parkings that are deeded to this wow. unit. They all, wow. they do share, but they don't have to share. So if you have teenagers or people that come and stay for long, those are your parking places. They just redid the kitchen appliances and painted the kitchen. It's very, very fresh. It shows beautifully. It is a mil it's an elevator table, a million three. Do you hear me? A million three, that is an <laughs> exceptional value. I'm not kidding What's you. What's the price again? A million three. <laughs> That's only one of the closets. These closets are gigantic. The master has a, a dual-sided fireplace, study on one side, master on the other side. Two more bedrooms on the second floor, and then the third floor they use as a game room, but it does have a full bath and closet, so certainly could be a fourth bedroom. Big laundry room on the second floor. All right, so you see right behind those gates, that's where all those parking places are that belong to this unit. Wow. Nice. Nice. It's, it's big. 5,600, yeah. yeah, it's big. And the lot's 7,500, and the lot's bigger than most West University lots. It's huge. Yeah. And it's a gated area within it's, a it's gate. It's gated area, area within the gates. Uh, it's a very, very good value. 75 Briar Hollow Lane, a million five ninety five head of the carpus. That's a real list. Yeah. Vicky was not leased for a while. Was that what? Was it leased? I think so. It must have been because it was on the market for a long time. Yeah. Well, it must have been leased then because it's shown or off market for more than six months. It's not really nice. Yeah. 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 Yeah
It's, it's really stunning. The yard is fabulous. <clears throat> Master. Big uh, balcony overlooking the backyard. What year? Um, 2001. 2001. 2001. Four bedrooms, they're using two of them as studies. That's one of them. But... <clears throat> So it's just outside of looking the pool, it has a pool bath, a half bath. I don't room for kids. Nice shower, too. There's the pool bath, half bath. Now this is incredible. It is, it, it doesn't even look as big as it is, but it's a huge area in, in the attic that you could use to make another room or increase closets or, you know, it's in, all the second floor. It's on the second floor. Okay. Nice. <coughs> Twelve one oh three bar you Beauregard. Okay, so this is another one. Speak of value. This this house is two years old. It was completed in May of twenty seventeen. Built by um McCullum. It was the current owner, this is virtually staged living room through the entry to the dining room. That's the big family room. The, the current that's the game room on the first floor. Bedroom five is on the first floor, and the other four bedrooms are up. That's the covered patio. Summer kitchen's already there. That's master bedroom up. It has talk about closet. That should be the next deal. Yeah, there you go. The closet's amazing. That center island can have two suitcases easily, and there's a dozen drawers below it, and then the two built-in dressers. Master bath, master bath. That's the kitchen looking towards the island, towards the kitchen, different view of the kitchen. Um, all this all downstairs space, it's, it's beautiful. This house, there's a, a, a bar, then the butler's pantry, then a home office, then uh, that's the fifth bedroom downstairs. That's the bath with the fifth bedroom downstairs. And then that's one of the bedrooms up, and then the Hollywood bath, bedroom, bathroom, bedroom. And then the last bedroom has its own private bath. So the current owner paid $2 million for the house. Um, when she moved out, that's laundry room. When she moved out, she re finished the floors to the, I have a receipt for $60,000. She's what? leaving, yep, Whoa, she's leaving um, $26,000 worth of electronics, you know, for the house. So you're at $2 million one, and we're priced at a million eight. This is wow. a very good value in Memorial. So it's about 5,200 square feet, and it's on a 10,000 square foot lot, two years old. Beauregard, it's a horseshoe-shaped street. This is right in the middle. Uh, it's down the street from Memorial Forest Club and Frostwood Elementary School. It's a good location. It's great size. It, well, available. What I know. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Speaking of value, okay, we're at a million eight fifty. The seller paid two million four for this house. This is a compound in Katy. It's on an acre. It's got this gorgeous pool and pavilion. And um, that's just an aerial shot of it. It's circular drive plus a gated drive. Pool, lighted tennis court, not just a tennis court, lighted tennis court. That's a four car garage. Um, that's that's one of the side yards in addition to all this other. Two story entry, beautiful staircase, two story living room, opens to dining room. Dining room opens to this little uh, wine room area here. Master bedroom with sitting areas on the first floor. That's the sitting area. Master bath. There's three vanities in the master bath. Um, that's the third one. And the exercise room is the second closet. He just a single guy. So he uses that as an exercise room, but that would be another giant closet down. Kitchen has um, like two islands in it. It's just everything's on a very grand scale. I think close to 11,000 square feet. Um, two dishwashers. Kitchen, breakfast, family room, real open. The breakfast room looks like it's the dining room because it's so big, but that's the breakfast room. Um, yeah, there's a bedroom downstairs. That's a media room upstairs. And and it opens to the game room. Uh, study upstairs. That's been painted. They just hadn't finished, so I didn't get a new photo. They call that the children's TV room upstairs. What? Yeah. There is a game room in the media children, room. The yeah, that too. that could be another thing. You bedroom, bathroom, bedroom. That kids room is on one side of the study, and that's a big uh, sauna there. And then it still has a shower and a separate tub shower. One of the kids rooms, 
their kids' homework room. This is over the four car garage, so it's a gigantic space <laughs> with a full bath. Um, that's the pavilion, I call it the sports bar. Full at night. Um, two uh, putting greens. Maybe he wasn't single when he bought it. Well, no, no, no. He, had a, he was married and had four kids. They're all run now. He's remarried, but you know. And it's in Katy. It's in Katy. It's a, there's a man guarded access. You can't get in there, you know, to look around. It's a great how It's a great value, people. If you have anyone that's Mike valued, Turner can move their minded. offices there. Yeah, into the house. We can just hop. Right. One the No, never has flooded. Thirty nine oh five Marlowe, two million forty nine Lisa Bear. Oh, so now it's is it finished now? This one. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Are you I just didn't realize it was already finished. Um, this is real estate. It's at a lesser price. Good thing for real Yeah. And new construction completed, so that thing does good. <laughs> Got a type one in there. Fifty-three twenty-four Dora, two million six fifty. Mike Spear, Jandor Garden. Is that? It's a rendering. It says Jandor Garden. I think it's it's right? Is that? It's close to the museum. No. <clears throat> oh, Dora. Oh, yeah. Dora. Yeah. 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 Ye
Well, sooner their turn to now. Yeah. Just because you can Y'all live in a big one. Yeah. And Reno's a big one. Okay. So this is about the house. The potty pool. That's the little shit. That is so cool. Yeah. 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 All the grounds are, of course, well maintained. I like them with the yeah, little doors. It's just, it's just oh, a are fabulous great. house. It's really? Absolutely fabulous. Who did the photos? Uh, Patrick Bertolino. Oh, I love them. They're beautiful. They're oh, way over yeah. the pool yeah. on both sides. We just couldn't use all the pictures. They were just so pretty. Yeah. <laughs> well, you need to do a magazine on it. Yes, we need to do a, a home for these photos. That's the, um, there is a three-car oversized garage behind that door. That they wouldn't let us take pictures of. He had his cars in there, so it was off, off limits. That That's beautiful. They just came. I've got one more. Oh, uh, Rosemary Park, Connor. Yeah. What? Or no, no. Yeah. And you're here. Yes. yes. I'm here. A million two eighty eight nine. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this came up last week. We just listed it Monday a week ago. Uh, but the photos weren't done until uh, a dust shoot last Tuesday. And I wanted y'all to see this. It's a beautiful home on the golf course in Royal Oaks. On the 10th fairway, it's five or six bedrooms, um, well, five and a half baths, gorgeous pool. How many sales do you realize? It's mixed. Things either sell very quickly or it takes a while. This is we've got the second showing on it today. <laughs> Marilyn, you would like this seller. Good. <laughs> the other one hates my guts. <laughs> and I'm so. so. Oh, you know where you stand. Does it have a casita? No, this is not one of the plans with the casita. Okay. If you hear of one out there, why are you there? I have one. Okay, is that it? Mm -hmm. Any other new listings? New listing. Yes, ma'am. I have a coming soon that will be listed next Thursday at 2315 Tangley in Southampton. It's about 2,500 square feet on an enormous 60, <laughs> almost 60, uh, 900 square foot lot with a gorgeous backyard. We are pricing it super, super low at $989 for, uh, it, it requires some vision, um, but the master back is huge. So somebody coming in there and updating it would be fabulous. There's a way to make a drop dead, gorgeous open kitchen to the family room. So the space, the functionality is is awesome. It just you know doesn't meet what fire are looking for necessarily today, but a great fixer upper. Got any clients for that? Okay, does he? Got one coming probably by the end of the week, but they're doing the final make ready right now. And the rate replaced is just around the corner. Uh, did not flood, and good. It was a good person. Good master down. Master is on second floor. They'll be in mid five. Can you put an elevator in though? He wants it down. Okay. E. Uh, based on the advice of this group, we have put a fifty thousand dollar BTSA in place on Three Philbrook. I mean, that's a stunning home. It's a great contemporary home if you have anybody looking in Carlton Woods. And the fifty thousand dollar BTSA is for all offers brought between now and August thirty first. So, great home. Which one is this? Three Philbrook. Got a six car garage. Okay. Any other new listings? No, okay, no. Please welcome Jamie Miller. Where's Jamie? Stand up. Look. Now everybody look at him. I said, Jamie, who do you look like? 
Russell Crowe has yes. joined our yes. yes. Good evening, yes. I'm Holly no. Rickman, he's very successful in real estate development, and um, he says that when he was walking, where were you walking when everybody started taking a picture? In Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. He was, he was, he was, he was filming, filming a movie, and they said, oh my God, Russell Crowe, Russell Crowe's here, and Jamie kept saying, I'm not him, I'm not him. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Is that not hysterical? Jamie, welcome. We're glad you're here. Thank you. He is going to be working. He is going to be working out of this uh, the this office, the central. Mar uh, I don't know what we're going to call our new office. No. We're still having a uh, discussion over our new office name. Oh, so, what do we Where do we have a contest? Uh -huh, yeah, and but he is going to work his SOI in the Fort Bend area. Oh. Um, just a few announcements before we start. Uh, number one. Jean Risha, is Jean here? She is not here. She is our agent. She lives in the Woodlands. She is running for office with HAR. We're going to send you, uh, when it comes out where you can vote, we're going to send y'all something. So please, please, everybody, go and vote for Jean Risha. We need her representation. Voting yeah, um, starts tomorrow morning. Yeah. Jean Risha, perfect. And can I just say, Jean is also teaching a contracts class um, for three hours of NCE uh, this Friday. So if anyone's interested, okay. Wait, how do you how do you vote? Do you go on to hard? We're going to get send you a link. We're going to make it so easy. I love it when you do that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you'll get the link. Um, number two. You'll get it. Let you the, um, I just want to make sure, and we've said this repeatedly, but I need to say it again. We value you more than any house out there. And I'm saying this because one of our agents had some very, a very, very strange person come to her open house this weekend. And um, you know how you can get an instant vibe when somebody comes yes. in? And she was quick thinking. I mean, the way this person was clutching a purse to their chest, I mean, she didn't know what was in there, you know? It was just weird. Which and she immediately said, oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. I have an appointment to go show, so I'm having to close early. But here's the brochure. Please have your agent call me. I'd love to show you the house. And then close the door and locked up and left. That is what you need to do. Just trust your instinct. You know, this person could have been just a weirdo and would have been fine, but you don't know that. So we want y'all to be safe above everything else. And usually you can get an instinct from people that just, ooh, not nice, you know? So just say, oh, I'm so sorry. Be quick thinking. You know, there's not one of these things going around that this person's going around. Oh, no, 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 not this yet. is not, no. I'm just telling everybody to be safe out there, you know, and think. She was very smart and quit thinking on her feet. Okay, and this is just for Briar Hollow agents. The crates are coming, going to be delivered to this office between 8 and 10 o'clock Wednesday morning. We're having all these crates brought in. We are going to get two at each desk as soon as they come in. We'll get them dispersed as quickly as possible. So just know Wednesday we will get them to you. Wednesday like tomorrow. Wednesday like tomorrow. Correct. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All day long. This you're right. Right. You're off. That's right. Um, but we don't even get up till tomorrow morning. So then we'll get them dispersed. But you got our names on. No, we're going to give you labels for them. You just keep it in your office. Don't put it anywhere. Keep it in your office, and we're going to give you like Are we getting, is, is there going to be new furniture, or are we taking out desks? It's all new, baby. No, <laughs> no, it's all new. It's all new. New office all furniture. Uh, I, I want everybody in here to answer, Don. Keep it on, baby. New furniture. Okay. And remember, um, please know that we have to pack up everything in that Tiffany closet. So it, please think right now, oh my gosh, I've got a closing August 5th. Well, there's no Tiffany closet for you to go to to get a gift August 5th. Right. So please think ahead 
and tell Jenny right now what you need so that we can get it to you. Because on July 31st, we're packing up that office, okay? It's going to take a lot to get all those things packed up in there. Does that make sense? Um, just don't delay because it won't be there. Now, we can always order it for you, but you have to drive to Tiffany's and the gallery and pick it up and then go to your closing. So if you know you're closing something before you move in the office, please let her know now, okay? All right. Can I just make one more plug for uh, class? So of course. For those of you that haven't taken uh, Cindy Fremo's organization. It's amazing. It's a business Great planning class. class. It is amazing. It's amazing. And so she will be teaching that class so on Thursday at 9.30 here in this meeting room. So I really, really encourage you. And she you does a good on. job of not making you and feel really bad about yourself. So she's giving you all of her tricks and organized. tips over the last, what, 12, 15 years. So yeah. please come Thursday at 9.30. Okay. So Thursday at 9 30 is Cindy, and then Friday, Friday at 9 30 is three hours of MCE with Jean Risha. Okay, who's going first today? Tess, you're going first? You're on. Okay, hold on. Oh, where is Leash? Leash! You're hiding back there. I didn't even see you. Come here. Leash is our hero. I just back to work and doing emails and everything. I actually forgot what I was doing. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I told Leash we're out of here July 31st. Yeah, you get together. New office. I can't wait. Yeah. July 31st. When am I invited to come speak at the new office? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so I don't wait a minute. Well, we have a schedule. I don't know when you're on the schedule. So I have a public proclamation. You guys have have uh, inspired me to, to proclaim this, and that is. I am not wearing a suit until Labor Day. Yeah. <laughs> we have all of these handsome guys that come in. It's the Keith and Jamie and I are only crazy people that have jackets on. Jamie had an excuse. It's his first day. He took it off, right? <laughs> so Keith and I are only two guys. I mean, it is ridiculously hot out there. It I'm is. not wearing a suit. What's going to happen on Labor Day? Yeah. Labor Day? It's still, still, it's still going to be hot. That's how you know. You could have drawn a line in the sand. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, real quick, a, a couple of things. Um, there, there's all kinds of crazy stuff that's happening in the insurance world right now. Um, the biggest kind of um, trend that I'm seeing out there is that luxury carriers are very hesitant to insure houses that have flooded. And so we're getting a lot of, of calls right now and a, a lot of uh, inquiries on houses that are for sale that people want to buy that have flooded. Um, middle market still okay on it, like Nationwide, Traveler, Safeco, all those carriers are okay insuring houses that have flooded. But the luxury carriers, uh, you know, along the Memorial in Bel Air, we just had a big house in Bel Air that flooded that would that we couldn't find insurance in the normal luxury market for. So we just had to stick this you know million dollar plus house in Travelers, which is really really expensive. Um, so so be careful because all of, most of your listings are in that million. Plus area, and if it is million plus and it's flooded, you might have some issues. Yes, Margaret. Uh, why is that? Because it, it's not it's like they're covering flood insurance. Great question, and, and I don't have a good explanation because that's that was my that has always been my argument. You haven't paid a dime for, for flooding in, in those homes. Why are you canceling? The only thing that I can think is that these carriers are almost at capacity, so they're trying to cherry pick just yeah. the best risks. And, and anything that they can kind of figure out that says that ah, it's probably not the right risk, but they're 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 leaving it off their appetite. But, and but so, Leash, we had um, a closing yesterday in Bel Air. The house had never flooded. This guy's a USAA member, but this was like a million two house, right. and so he was looking to Chubb and other luxury carriers. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. They wouldn't take it. Mm -hmm. so, even, though it so, even though it had never flooded. They've always had an issue if the, if the elevation's low, if it's below baseline elevation, they've always had an issue with that. And these houses, even if they're at compliant levels and they flooded, and a lot of Bel Air, they were compliant levels but flooded, they're, they're having issues with insuring those. Okay, but this so, is right, maybe because some of these uh, luxury insurance cover additional flood insurance? It, it, I would say, I, um, I, I would. I would think that that would be part of it, but if you look at the houses that have flooded and the carriers that are declining it, and they're not offering any kind of flood uh, products anyway right now, and so so no, I, I think it's I think it's just a cherry picking situation. What's the max on luxury coverage? 
So luxury coverage, um, it, there's really not a max. They'll, they'll go up to 50 million as far as dwelling coverage is concerned. And I don't know if any house in Houston is at a $50 million level right now, um, but keep. So I just had a home fallout that's in a zone that on the 100 year flood plan, it was four feet below, but now with the new regulation, 500, it's right at that 70 feet level. And my question is, is it still, is insurance rates going to change because of this new? Chapter 19. Yes. So, so he had, a, had a, a house that fell out because the client didn't like the fact that it was out of compliance with uh, Houston's Chapter 19. And you guys are familiar with that, right? So yeah. anything in a high risk flood zone has to be two feet above the 500 year elevation now, which is really, really high. Um, and so, so the insurance rates won't really be affected by that, but the higher the house, the cheaper the insurance is, the lower the house, the more expensive it is. Well, in its zone, right it's AE zone, it's four feet above, so it's not even yeah. an issue. So it'd be, it would be cheap, but since it's out of compliance, I mean, I can't do anything, like, we can't really do anything with the, the market what people are thinking but i don't think i don't think insurance rates are going to be affected by chapter 19. that's that's right question. thank you Robin. but like on his house there was there was no future plan to remodel it and isn't chapter 19 more about the remodeling of the 50 percent of the value yeah. so i mean yeah. it wouldn't be at risk for chapter 19 because there weren't any i mean the house had already been remodeled there weren't yeah so so i that is correct, but it, it, the, the insurance is not impacted on that, right. but the, the people's mentality, yeah. I mean, chapter 19 is gonna affect a lot of people, probably 50% of the people, if they understand what they were buying and, and, and what they have to do. If they wanted to remodel, then they might pull back a little right. bit. Right. <laughs> uh, I, have, I have two clients right now in Cyprus, which is a little bit unusual, but if you look at the flood mapping tool, there's all, you know, there's so, Cypress Creek is so twisty yeah. and turning. So, I've had a couple of clients back out because the house is not in, even in the 500 year lead, right on the edge, and they keep saying they're going to redraw the maps and we're going to be in the flood zone. Is there any timeline on the map? So, if you remember, Let me repeat that question. Yeah. She's asking, is there any timeline on them redrawing the flood maps because people are hesitant about buying? right next to where the flood line, the 500 year, yes. Yeah, and so 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 the flood maps, if you remember <laughs> after Tropical Storm Allison in 2001, mm -hmm. the flood yep. maps weren't drawn in 2000, until 2007. They weren't drawn and approved until 2007. There's a lot of talk about redrawing the flood maps right now, but there hasn't been a whole lot of solid activity. And so, so <clears throat> they may have changed them but they may come further out of the high risk flood zones also did that the house didn't flood right mm -hmm. and so so if you look at what's happening up along the braze bayou also all the improvements if you look at the braze bayou improvement project website a lot of the flood map shrinks actually and so so it, it's it, and again public perception is one thing but the truth is another it, and it's very difficult to, to mix the two and, and uh, the best advice I can give you guys is to have them call me and I can kind of give them an idea. Um, There's actually a website that you can go and and see the, uh, uh, along Grace Bio, as a result of the widening of the bio, they released a, you know, a, a, a projected flood map and you'll see what yeah. Lisa just said with the shrinking of the hundred year. So I've shown that to people. You know, but I, I cut and paste all the disclaimer that's on there that protects myself. Yeah. But is there one of those for Cypress Creek? Um, I don't think there's one. That that was okay. a, a very specific one for the, the, the raised yeah. okay. by yes. project. Jamie, did you have a question? Is uh, Chapter 19 City of Houston or Harris County? It, it is a great question. It's, it's City of Houston um, uh, zoning ordinance and, and permitting ordinance. But my understanding is a lot of the county was supposed to adopt it as well. Now, uh, West U has not adopted it. They, they changed their ordinance. Bel Air didn't adopt it. Southside Place didn't adopt it. I don't know about the villages, um, but but it, it is it is pretty wide. It, it's a it's a pretty big problem, you know, because because a Meyer Land home would have to be built higher than myself from from its current situation for it to, to pass compliance. Um, so, all right, real quick, a couple other things. Metal roofs, electric carriers are still having, are starting to have issues with metal roofs because of the, the cosmetic damage, they, they cover cosmetic wow. damage. 
Um, um, so, so uh, you know, my wife just asked me if we could put a mirror roof on the house, and of course that's what she wants. It's like it's super expensive, but I don't think we can do it now. I guess they're 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 having some issues. Um, other last thing, and I'll, I'll stop talking with hail. Yeah, you mean? With hail, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so the mirror roofs are supposed to last forever. Yeah. But when right. Hailstorm hits, it looks like a golf ball. And people don't right. like that. You know, so they'll file a claim, but a lot of times they'll exclude the, the cosmetic damage. But there's been litigation that says, hey, it's not a cosmetic issue. That's a structural issue to the roof. So they're starting to pay for all the roofs. So they're like, we're out. No more, no, no more metal roofs. Okay. Um, last thing that I'll talk about is my um, dog bites. Um, that those of you that have uh, uh, clients with dogs, uh, insurance carriers are also starting to exclude dog bites. Right? Oh, whoa. So, so this yeah, is kind of special for me. My, my dog just got mauled by our neighbor dog. Oh my God. He lived, but if I was litigious, that's an immediate claim, and it could be huge. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a like I, 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 yeah, I, and I consider myself pretty mentally stable. But but watching that, I mean, it affected me for a couple of yeah. days. That's all I could think yes, about. Yeah. But so so I can see how it, so somebody could say, hey, I've got emotional damage. I'm suing your butt because you have a pit bull of like Bernard mix and mauled my dog. So anyway, if those of you that have uh, clients with the vicious breeds of dogs, pit bulls, chows, uh, Dobermans, uh, Akitas, Rottweilers, and all those kind of crazy dogs that are trained to attack, just be careful, okay? Thank you so much. Wait, for I have one question. I have one question from uh, a virtual listener. What about garage flood vents? I don't garage know what he's. I don't know what he. I don't know. What are those? So garage flood. So so that that's a really um, big topic. So if your house is elevated and your garage doesn't have vents, then in it and you're in a high risk flood zone. Then you're the the FEMA's going to classify your home as being at grade, not elevated. Because your the garage is attached, water flows into it, the, the water pull, pulls the garage down, and the rest of the home comes with it. If it is vented properly, then um, in, in vented properly means that the, whatever square footage of the garage there is, there has to be equal amount of square inches in vents, in venting, for water to flow through, and the vents have to be on more than one wall. Then they will consider your house elevated at that level versus at the. Okay, can you level. install that in a slab foundation? That's twenty years old. Install vents in a slab slab foundation. The vents are the yeah. vents are the yeah. 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 said it halves the insurance price. Um, tell him to call me. I will. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's a big broad range. Uh, just attached garages, or that's detached garages. Or that's that's okay. so that's, <laughs> that's attached that's garages right. and and the crawl yeah. space yeah. under your living area. So your, the crawl space under your living area has to be vented also if you're in a high risk zone so the water can flow through it. And a lot of people that don't try to put uh, covering over it because rats and possums and stuff get under there. And so they try to cover it up and if the elevation starts to get people to say, hey, it's covered up, there's not, it's not vented and, and they'll charge you more. But more importantly, that, that it's the house is much more, um, there's much more possibility of the house flooding or, or falling over if it does flood. So you want to keep that, that area open. So, great questions. I've seen two houses that we talked about on this slide that kind of yeah. bucks with them. Where brand new houses with brand new wood floors and the floors are doing this stippling thing, and somehow moisture is coming up from what? Under, under, the, the, house. Yeah. under the house. Is it because the house wasn't vented at its period of being? Or was it it wasn't vented properly? It, it sounds, I mean, no, that, that really is a builder question. That's yeah. not an insurance guy. Yeah. Save yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can do all kinds of theories on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. All right. Thank all you right, guys. Thank all you for your information. You are a dog. A dog. Personally, I've never seen that. Chihuahua. Yeah, thank you for bringing everybody. Chihuahua. Wow. Good afternoon. Not yet. No. <laughs> After an insurance meeting, I'm like, what time where are we? Yeah. We're gonna talk about buying houses outside of the city of Houston. Oh, perfect. So great. 
Well, um, this meeting's update is about the Sotheby's network and the strength that we have here as a Sotheby's brand and what that means to you as agents. I know a lot of you are sending outgoing referrals and we appreciate that. And I know it's helpful to your clients to have that network. So we're going to talk about who's new in the game of the Sotheby's network. Um, does anyone know the current count of offices that Sotheby's has worldwide? Nine seventy one. Go for it, Robin Sooner. One thousand. One thousand. So that's wow. that's a great number to remember. Wow. So again, if you walk this away with anything out of this store, one thousand offices all over the world under the Sotheby's umbrella. Yeah, I got another update. Yeah. There you go. That's the latest press release. That's Seventy amazing. countries and territories, and more than twenty two thousand seven hundred sales associates worldwide. Um, and last year in 2018, there was 1.4 billion referrals sent within the network. So that's an awesome number. I mean, that's wow. that's what I think is the strength of Sotheby's truly is working together in all of our markets sorry, and being a global. How much? How much? 1.4 billion. So, um, in terms of global growth, I know that the Sotheby's management team always has their ears on the ground looking for new markets that are going to be profitable. Um, a good place for us to expand. So that's what we're going to go into right now, and I'm in control. Here we go. So how cute is that? Uh, Portfolio Sotheby's International Realty. They are new, um, new to our brand, and they are in the Bentonville, Arkansas area. Does anyone know who's big in Bentonville? Oh, Walmart. <laughs> And nostalgia, I mean, clearly, they have not only Walmart, they have J.B. Hunt Transport, Tyson Foods, yeah. and the University of Arkansas. So it's a huge market. So they are the second set of these um, international realty in Arkansas. Qatar. So we have, we're going global, international. We have a few international ones. Um, so this is our second, uh, our second circle, office. Circle trip, circle trip. So, <laughs> there you go. Talk to Marilyn. Um, so, yes, so this is our second Sotheby's in the Gulf. Um, uh, we have Gulf Coast Sotheby's as well that's located in Dubai, so they're expanding their markets there. Back to the U.S. We have Encore Sotheby's. This is in Indiana, Fort Wayne, North Webster, Roanoke, Indiana. Does anyone know anyone going out there? You may run across them. You may run across them. The Dread, Sotheby's. Um, so this is one of our newest one, and we actually had an agent this week, Justin Braden. Uh, he sent an outgoing referral over to Madrid Sotheby's. So um, being able to help his clients. So I love that not only is it a new office for our market, that we're sending referrals immediately. So I just think that too shows and um, what our Houston clientele is about as well. Karen Sotheby's over in North Carolina. Our uh, Aberdeen, yeah. Seven yeah. Lakes. Yeah. This is the second um, brand new office that we have that we've sent a referral to this week as well. And it's actually a personal referral for our agent. So North Carolina, Pinehurst, Seven Pines, Whispering Pines, Carthage, Aberdeen, and Seven <laughs> Lakes, their coverage area. We've got Terra uh -huh. Sotheby's. This is Greater Shanghai. So this is in China. <laughs> this is a big big office for us as well, especially here in Houston when we have investments that are going back and forth. That should be good. Amanda Howard Sotheby. So this is Greater Huntsville, Madison County, and Lake Guntersville in North Alabama. All right, so this is just going to show you. That's space. That's a little that's bit a second of space city. It's Boeing. Yeah. 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 There's yeah. obviously yeah. people in this room. That's where my husband's from, and Huntsville is unbelievable. Huntsville's gorgeous. And like today they're awesome. having a big celebration. So it's like the Martha Turner. Yes. Yeah. 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 They're in Alabama. So anyone beautiful. who has questions about Alabama, come to Robin Connor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mexico said to be international realty. So this is in beautiful. Mexico City. Wow. So, um, Really, really great for us to have all this coverage. And these are all offices that have opened up in the last 12 months, just so everyone's putting those time frames together. And then we've got Zeitlin, Sotheby's International Realty, which is in Nashville. Um, so Nashville and the greater, uh, greater surrounding areas. So two things that I wanted to point out about these companies that we've just announced. So Zeitlin, um, as well as, um, I believe, Amanda Howard were both leading RE companies that have now joined the network. And so very successful companies within their own, within, you know, leading their independent company, very, very much like Martha Turner Properties, that 
joined forces with Sotheby's and are really truly loving <laughs> the network and, and we are expanding leaps and bounds. So don't forget about um, don't forget about your network. Always be thinking about who you know, um, wherever it is, whatever they're doing. And so Jen, Dent, and I were talking yesterday, kind of preparing, and I was thinking about outgoing referrals. And sometimes when I come up here, we have famous people to announce that you know Seven's Jeans or Julia Child's Kitchen or something really fancy. And I, I asked her, you know, what do, what do we think the takeaway is for this, you know, for this start of this event? She goes, these are all just regular people. All of our referrals that we've had are just regular people doing regular things in their lives, um, and we have the network here that is is able to, you know, assist them in their regular lives. And so I know that's a big challenge sometimes um, when you think about Sotheby's and you think about the luxury market of it. No, oh, that's you know over my price point, or oh Sotheby's, that's really you know really fancy. But all of these markets, and I don't know if Robin can tell us about Huntsville, Alabama, if it's just regular people out there, regular, people. regular old people, just like us, just like us down here in Houston. <laughs> Um, but I think that that's, that is the takeaway. Um, and, and even when you think that you have a really close relationship, so I'm going to tell one of, one of our international personal stories, success stories. Um, one of my, our most recent closing, closings was um, in Canada, uh, Wellington, Canada. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, I know this, these clients very, very well. They happen to be my parents. Um, and they've been having this dream forever and ever and ever. And my mother's from Canada originally. They've been going up two, three times a year to visit family, this, that, and the other. And she just was very resistant about being introduced to a realtor. And I finally said, Mom, this is my job. <laughs> if I can convince one person to allow me to introduce you to a realtor, please, please do. So she, the worst. <laughs> they are. she had my aunt out looking at all the houses through the windows, I promise, before she was allowed to introduce her. So, um, but this is a really small town, uh, three hours outside of Toronto, Farm County, you know, little two bedroom, one bath cottage. So their dreams came true, their lifelong dreams came true. They were connected with a Sotheby's agent who was very professional, I was told. And they just closed on their their dream cottage in Canada. So that's Aww, my that's, that's awesome. my personal that's referral to so you. Gotta keep working at those clients because they will they will <laughs> resist. Um, okay. So the other new announcement that we have is we're always talking about how our brand is partnering with people and and being there available. We sell houses. We are realtors. Who are you? And how can we help you? So. Back to school, almost, not really, but the teachers are preparing to go back to school. So they're starting their orientations. So we've rolled out a program, and I want to make sure that everybody's aware of it. This is called the Martha Turner Sotheby's Realtor Reward Program. And so we have gone in and with several districts, and we're still expanding our reach, um, have partnered with school districts, uh, Spring Branch ISD, Klein ISD, Conroe ISD, Fort Bend ISD, we're working on some of the other ones, and too, if you have schools or you have involvement with schools that you want to come in and have us um, pitch this program to them to see. So anyone in the school district who's looking to buy or sell a home, they can come through our program and they're gonna get a cash back <coughs> reward because we know how important our educators are to our community. We know that they drive our real estate prices and that our you know, community and people are the ones who are who are in the school. And so even though we're not in the same industry, we do very similar things. So we have partnered with that. Basically, if you're an ISD employee, you come through this program and you're introduced to one of our realtors, um, or if you have somebody, you know, if you're a request that you wanted to, to make that happen as well, you know somebody, they get a 20% cash back. So either their listing um, is reduced by 20% or they're going to get a credit at closing cost if they come through this program. So teachers, ISD, counselors, principals, superintendents, whoever that you know that may be in the market to buy or sell the house, make sure they know about this so that they, they can get um, a little reward from us. So this is in or out, in or going up. Right, so whether they're buying, selling, um, you know. Did you say HISD? HISD, I haven't gotten okay. together yet. And um, some of these. Spring Branch. I heard. Uh, more. Spring Branch, yeah. And some of these, so when you're looking at school districts, some of the districts have these programs set up where a Spring Branch ISD, it's called Extra Credit Partners and its communities. You know, this is something that they've done. So some of the districts have this, 
you know, where, where community partners can easily come in and sign up and get your brochure so that you can, you know, you can market it to them. And some of the districts don't have this quite set up. So it's not that we're trying to um, exclude anybody, but it takes just a little bit more time, a few more connections to be able to get to the right person to make sure that we can get this up and loaded. But you, if you have anybody that you want to make sure is added to this, um, that we can go and promote, or if there's something that, that you can um, do it with private schools. Do we do it with private schools? Only with the, we, she set up the program with the actual the school public district. school district. Public school district. Oh, but no, so oh. it's public. Mm -hmm. Test is that include retirees? Um, normally, the programs, and this also is dictated by their district, they need to be active employees. Active employees with the district at the time of closing is kind of our fine print. Um, so I have some flyers up here. If anyone wanted to take some of the flyers, I'll leave them right here. Does anyone have any more questions? Go ahead. Would you have that soft copy too, so we could email? Yes. Yes, it depends on what district too, because we personalize them to each of the districts. And then also we have a website set up um, that is, I have, to, I have to look at it exactly, something like Houston Reports, um, something like that. But we'll get that in the minutes to email you. But there's a website that they go in and they can click on their district and register and that kind of gets emailed right to us and they can leave notes if there's something, somebody that, you know, an agent that they're working with that they're requesting. Perfect. Thank you all. So I'm actually really glad Tess brought that up because I like to think that you guys know we're always working and even if we're not rolling something out that month, it's not because we just got lazy or anything. Because Tess started working on this program over a year ago and it, it started with just one school district and has slowly rolled into four, so it's a really time consuming thing. So just know we're always doing stuff in the background. So I like the fact that we can you know, tell you some of this stuff that we're working on. I also like that Tess went first and showed a bunch of pretty pictures because I'm a finance background and mine's just a whole bunch of like black and white numbers, so I apologize in advance. So I wanted to, I think it's really important to let you guys know how as a brokerage we're doing and based on the business planning sessions from last year, there was a lot of comment, comments about you guys want to know a little bit more about the competitors, so we're going to dive into that. This is the same structure I did for the first quarter, so it's going to be very similar and so you know, for decades, basically, um, we're the same model, the same full service model as Greenwood King, John Doherty, and Heritage. So that's why we always uh, compare to them. And this year, as everyone knows, we have a new competitor that came to town. They, they don't quite do enough business yet to be considered the top four, but you know, they're ramping up business and everything. I got a slide later on them, and so we can talk about uh, Compass if we want to later. So, <laughs> if we want to. <laughs> if we want to. So uh, this is really like a baseline, and I think that's why it helps to show the competitors, because if I just say, uh, well, let me take a step back. This is active listings as of one day. This is a one-day snapshot. So on June 30th, the last day of the quarter, we had $826 million in listing volume, which is awesome, right? And when we compare to our other three main competitors, we're 40% of the market on the listing side. So we are continuing to be very, very strong on the listing side, which is excellent. You know, so in terms of volume, we are JDR and Heritage combined, and we are we have double the amount of volume as we would gain. So I think that giving you this baseline really helps you understand just the breadth. And when we talk about reach, sometimes it's in the abstract, but when you can look at it, when you can say we have double the number of yard signs, we just have double the number of business that our number two competitor has, that just, that just really should help you uh, with your confidence when you're going into presentations. And then here's also on the side side, and you can see how we are. We're still around that 40%. And all of these slides have been emailed to you before, so you have all of these in your inbox. Um, so I want to get into the showings, because when I talk with agents, we talk about how the feel of the market is, and the best number I have to share with you are the number of showings that I can track. So the second quarter of last year, we had a little over 11,000 showings. This year, we were off a bit. I'm going to talk about that. But we still had over 10,000 showings this quarter. It's a decline of 4%. Um, and really, the big driver was June. If you remember, June of 2018 was the best month Martha Turner ever had ever, So, which is amazing last year. But now you're a year later, and you have to 
compare against it. it makes it a little bit harder. So our June of this year was a bit softer. And so that's the main driver. So April and May were extremely similar. We were actually up a little bit. But because June of last year was so strong, that's why we're seeing a little bit of weakness in the second quarter this year compared to last year. Um, I also like to mess around with numbers too. Um, I'm not super weird, but that's just one of the things I like to do. So I broke out the showings as well. So I presented on this in the first quarter. We actually had nine days where we had over 200 showings in one day, which is incredible. That this year dropped down to one. Um, so we're not seeing that same huge weekend burst that we saw the first quarter. So I don't know if you guys are maybe seeing this in your open houses on the weekends. Oh, yeah. Okay. Where are you seeing nine? I see four. Where are you? Yeah. Nine, I'm sorry. Nine was the first quarter of this year. Oh, okay. When I presented it. Okay, okay, ago. okay. Four was last year. Okay. So the second quarter of last year was four. The second quarter of this year was one. Got it. So we were just, in the first quarter, we saw those huge bursts on the weekend. And in the last couple months, not seeing it as much. Um, so then I brought it down a little bit. So at 150, you can see last year, this year, 16, 13, we're pretty similar. Then I took it down to 100. And so 69, 66, so that's pretty similar. So in terms of showings, it was really just July, I'm sorry, June. And if you guys are tracking the daily showings, you can see yeah. that June, we actually, during the week, we kind of dipped into the 70s and 80s a bit, yeah. Yeah. which was not yeah. usual. The weekends yeah. were still pretty high. We were averaging 140, 150 on the weekends, which was the same as last year. It's just that midweek traffic of showings has come down a little bit. So I did want to make sure I shared that with you. And that was primarily in June. So you, it's too close. We don't know if June just happened to be an off month or if that's the beginning of some kind of trend. But we definitely want to be aware of it. And we definitely want to share that with you guys as well. Any showings questions? Yes, we talked about the, yeah, yeah. Yep. the car pretty much reported the same thing. So mm -hmm. the good news is, is we're pretty much in line with what's going on in the entire market. Yeah. It's, so, right, so it's not just us saying this. You know, the, the rest of Houston is so on off June. It's way too early to say if, if it matters or not. We've seen off months just because of timing, whatever it is. There's no macroeconomic driver that's really driving it. And I don't, besides the construction on the roads, I'm not really seeing much reason for a local. But nonetheless, this, this stuff just happens. We talked before, for every showing, a lot of times it's four or five phone calls. So that means the showing department did 40 to 50,000 phone calls in the second quarter. Oh, wow. So they try to be Excuse super me. efficient. So you know, <laughs> say your name, you're showing to you keep going on. So that's why. And they're always nice. Always right. Well done, Co-op. Good job, Co-op. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here on pendings. Again, this is a one day snapshot. And so just what we had <laughs> pended on the 30th was 271 million. So remember, we were the 40%. We're still hovering around there. Uh, days on market is a big driver for this. If you have low days on markets, your pendings are spinning over and it's generally lower. I will say our size are basically the same at this point last year. It's the price point. Our average price point is down a bit compared to last year. And again, that was June. June of last year, we just saw a lot of high-end stuff hit in the same month. And so um, last year, June, we were probably around 300 pending at this point. Uh, we're at 271 right now, but it, it's not size related. So the number of, so the business that's moving is the same. It's just happening at a bit of a lower price point. Uh, this is really a predictor for the third quarter. So you might be seeing that in your business. Maybe some of your lower end price homes are moving a bit quicker. Or, you know, it's just it's just a balance. So I'm not going to spend much time on here. This slides in. I do want to spend some time here because this is a metric that we really pay a lot of attention to. And so, you know, it's how many listings went into contract, not closed, but went into contract within 30 days. And the answer for Q2 was 208 out of over 600 Martha Turner's uh, summaries that were taken. So this is that exact same one third of yeah. listings. So this morning, I think there was 35 new listings. So probability will say 11 or 12 of them will pen within 30 days. And in your gut, you probably know if you're one of them or not. And if you are not, if you're one of the two thirds not pending in 30 days, you know, just our expectation and our hope is that you have a plan in place, whether it's whether it's price reduction schedule or whether it's whatever you're doing, staging, you know, whatever that is, just you have that plan in place. And you can obviously talk to us about that. So this is all we gave you some pounds. <laughs> you guys <laughs> <didn't see how. laughs> and then I wanted to break it out by price point because when you talk 
too general. I, I think you can't really get enough out of it. So here you can see the price point. And so, you know, when you look, you know, a lot of times it's like, oh, I have a $2 million. It's going to take me 90 days, six months. That's not always true. We had 31, again, this is just in the second quarter, 90 days, 31 over a million pended within 30 days. 83 over 500,000 pended within 30 days. So you can do that. Um, we really like this one a lot. This is the one I look at a lot. And so, you know, we updated our social media campaign. So every Tuesday, we have a sold in 30 go out. And we're having like 15 to 18 agents every week have something closed that was pended in 30 days. But just to talk about that for a second, the, the qualifier to get on that is it has to list and pend within 30 days, but then it has to close and finalize through our accounting system the week before. So we had some questions on that. And it's only on the list side. If you brought a buyer, then, then it's not included. We're just really trying to emphasize the list side there. And the other thing is we're not emphasizing the house. The house doesn't sell the house. You guys sell the house. So when we do the social media promotion about sold in 30, it's your picture. And then in real small print, it's the address because we really want to celebrate you guys for keeping it together and doing everything like that. So that, that's every Tuesday. So that, that's going to go out again today. And I think today we have 16 pages. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I'll spend a little bit of time on the closed. So this is year to date. This is the first quarter and the second quarter. So here you go. This is what has been closed in terms of volume and sides. And you can see in terms of close, we're about um, John Doherty and Heritage combined. We've closed as much as them. So again, when you walk into either listing presentations or you're working with a buyer, that you should have immense confidence in what you're saying and what you're doing because you guys are the leaders here. Um, oh, like I said before, so Compass is obviously extremely loud. You know, they, they have extreme recruiting tactics to get to where they want to get. And so I wanted to bring them in. Like I said before, they're not quite a player yet to become one of the top four, but they're obviously How many agents are at that company? They're around like 70 to 80 agents at this point. Yeah. But you know, so they did their first wave where they took from the big four. And if you're watching, mm -hmm. you know, they took like 10 or 12 from Intero properties and they got a couple from Aqui. They have a ton from KW and a bunch of these, some brokers that I've never I don't know what you said. They bought which is like 10 or 12. So in terms of the big four agents, they probably only have like 20 or so. So, you know, they're they're going to do their model how they want to do it, which is fine. I have a success story. Okay. Um, the listing that I mentioned, um, what's really fascinating is that my clients who are selling bought a house from an agent who was previously with one of the top four, but switched. The compass and they didn't recognize the brand didn't want to do business with it called me and boom i got the listing awesome. grand yeah. matters. matters you know and i talked about some june softness and we're, you know obviously we don't want this to happen if we do go trend towards a softer market um people in general move away from risk and they go to quality and they, and they go to brands that they can trust and that there's a confidence about and, and a so, history. And a history. And if you're new on the block, you know, it's flashy, it's one thing, but but you know, you're not dealing with your home, which for most people is by far the most expensive yep. product. And you don't want to take risks, you become risk averse. And so I think that that is something in our favor. And also a huge takeaway from this too is that you should have some real confidence in the strength of the brokerage too. With despite all this going on, they've been around about eight months or so, and plus all the other noise that's happening in the industry. We're still doing extremely well. So I wanted to break out sides as well. So if the day comes where Compass does surpass Heritage, then we, we can mess around with the top four. But at this point, uh, I, I just don't think they're there yet. You know, maybe by the end of the year, something like that. We'll see how it goes. How does this compare to last year, first and second quarter? Do you know? That's an excellent question. So let's look at you. <laughs> So these numbers you just saw, these are the exact same numbers. Uh -huh. And now I want to pull in 18. And then here's the variance. So this slide is both very good and very bad at the exact same time. <laughs> so it's bad, obviously it's red, right? You don't you don't ever want to see right. all the big players trending downward. But why it's very good 
is because ours is less red. Look at where we are. You know, th this is there are double digits over here, and we're not we're not even there. And I talked about June of eighteen being our company's best year, best month ever. So that was June of last year was like thirty million over a normal June. So if June of last year was a normal June, and you take thirty million out of this number, we're almost flat to last year, except that we just had a killer month for the first six months. So again, with all that stuff happening, all the noise and everything to be almost flat, I think it's just absolutely incredible. So and I think it's because, you know, you come to these sales meetings, you do your professional development, you do the hard phone calls, you do the price reductions, all that stuff. And when you're in the weeds, I think it's hard sometimes. So it's really nice to take a step back and just know that, you know, what you're doing actually is having an impact and, and it's really good. So, um, again, this slide is has been mailed out, Suter mailed it out this morning. And if you need it, I can certainly send it. I should also say, these are all MLS numbers. These were all pulled from the MLS. I did not add non-MLS on right. top. These are all okay. MLS. So our company is actually, all the companies are going to be higher than this, but this is just MLS numbers. So in summary, I have a couple more slides. In, slump, in summary, I just want you to truly be confident. And if you don't have that confidence or you feel you stumble or whatever, we have so many classes and so many professional developments that you can come to. Connor does one every Thursday. We have keys to advertising. Suter does a bunch of classes. Um, we also have handouts, and we're actually going to build out a section on the hub that has all these handouts where you can go reference. We also, whenever we have a panel, we usually do a summary of that, so you can go through that panel. So we try to flood you guys with as much info as possible, which I know can be hard because sometimes it's too much. But if, but if you're ever stumbling, if you're ever walking into a house or going to a buyer client meeting and you're not feeling confident, definitely come in. I promise you we have the tools that can help you. Number two, I talked a bunch about this. Uh, it can't be an excuse. We had a killer month last year. We did not have a killer month this year. So uh, as a company, we're off a bit, but we're still doing extremely well. Yes. What was June 2018? How many million did That was 250 something. I don't remember when, they, when we got to 500 million for the year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No kidding. Yeah. It was yeah. a big deal. Yeah. 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 It was. I think it was two fifty three, and we had. You know, we did social media posts and everything about that. Yeah. Usually, a June for us is about two twenty. Um, again, one third of all the metrics. This is the one I really like a lot because this one is forward looking and it's immediate, and this shows that we're pricing correctly. You know, that we're doing everything right. So it's not only the listings taking, but how how quickly are we turning them over? And we have that consistent one third, which we've had for a while. And then finally, you know, we're still a market share leader. Let's call them the five brokers. To me, they're broker four, but let's say five, um, you know, and, and we're just doing really well. Another thing that came out of the business planning meetings last year was that uh, not only local competition, but just to talk a little bit more about what's going on globally. So I just have a quick slide here that I'll go through. If you have questions, we could chat or chat after. But some industry consolidation, some things that you might have heard about. If you follow Inman, Inman obsesses about like creating noise out of just some random stuff. But um, Redfin and Remax did a partnership. Redfin generally does the 1% list side. Remax is looking to get, I guess, a little more technical and get some more clients. They entered into this huge partnership. It was all this noise, how they're gonna recreate the entire industry. Well, that lasted not even 60 days. And they, and they walked away. And so now the new one, this was announced, I think a week ago, Redfin dropped Dropped her pretty quick and picked up Open Door. And so now they're trying to dive into the Open Door business. They just announced this partnership. Who knows how long it's going to last? But why I think this is important to know is if you're at a cocktail chatter or if you're out or ever, I just want you to have some kind of industry knowledge. And if someone says, Oh my goodness, did you hear this happen? Just know that there's a lot of new players entering the market. They're not all going to win, some are going to lose. A perfect example is Purple Bricks. Purple Bricks came into America hot two years ago. They are a very strong UK company, and they have a different model than we do. You know, we have the 6%. They have salaried employees, and it's just a completely, uh, like salaried agents, basically. Yeah. So it's a completely different model. They came in here, stumbled almost from the very beginning. They were supposed to literally change the entire American real estate model, which they talked about two years ago. Well, they're gone. They left the US. They announced that maybe two weeks ago. 
Uh, they're trying to expand into Australia and some other countries. But just know that and I, for the next 18 to 24 months, because so much money is pouring into this industry, that we are going to see a lot more announcements like this. Don't let this stuff distract you. <clears throat> all of this had basically zero impact on any business we did at all. But some channels will try to make a really big deal about it. It's just, it's just noise. Earlier in the week, uh, I guess last week actually, J.P. Morgan called the residential brokerage business the Wild West due to regulations and the amount of money pouring in and just the amount of just wildness that's going on. And so there, so J.P. Morgan is really struggling, you know, to do these valuations and everything. We've talked about Compass. Their last valuation at 4.4 billion was probably it's probably a year old. They love saying that number. Um, you know, they're supposed to IPO in the next year or so, which is good for them. That's great. The issue is once you IPO, you have to tell the truth mm -hmm. about finances. <laughs> and that, that potentially could be a big rub for them. You know, Uber came out. Uber was the greatest. Uber literally changed our lives, right? Well, their stock price is struggling. It hasn't gone up much because they, they had to announce they lost $3 billion last year. You know, like that, that's not that exciting. So anyway, I, I just wanted to, don't, don't let these big announcements deter you from anything you're doing. And this is my last slide. So what should I as an agent be doing? I'm going to say this one again. Be confident in your brokerage, in yourself, and in your business. Because you guys are the best in Houston, and you will win both the listing and the buyer side. And if you don't have that confidence, definitely come see us. We can get you there. So if you're working on a listing... Right now, I would say, price, price, price. If we are seeing a softness, price is a major, major driver. Robin and Connor just did a thing last week, a sales meeting. If you missed it, um, because we are, like I said before, a silent tech company. I mean, we're live streaming this right now. I love when people come and say, oh, I was in Europe and I watched the sales meeting while I was eating dinner. I mean, that's amazing. Like, that's really fun. But um, it's on the hub. So all these sales meetings are on the hub. You can go back and watch it. We have tons of materials to go over it. Price, price, price. Uh, a new thing I think you should experiment with if you have a listing that's maybe getting stale is don't promote the whole house. Too often do you see someone show every nook and cranny of the house. Once a client sees that, why would they call you? They saw everything. I think we should really focus on teasing what makes the house special. Is it the pool in the back? Is it the master bedroom? Is it the kitchen? What is it? And then just really focus on that. That should be one of your first three photos. I mean, historically, it's the elevation and you walk into the foyer and you walk the home. People, no one has that attention span anymore. You're on your phone, you know. Mm -hmm. if, if there is any photo of importance, it has to be in the first eight. Any photo. Because there's studies, it, it really drops off after Maybe eight. Maybe we should not use the first eight. Don't use photos anymore. I'm not. I'm not willing to advise that point yet. But what did she say? Don't use photos anymore. But in social media, you know, they even say after seven seconds, people lose interest. Yeah, correct. So if you if you're doing some kind of video, you got to hook them early. So just look at look at your business model and what you're doing, and then th double down on lifestyle. You know, uh, the baby boomers are not the biggest buyer class anymore. It's the millennials, and they love. Lifestyle. They like avocado on their toast and coffee and things like that. All the stereotypes, right? <laughs> but if you but but lifestyle is crucial. We always have been selling, should be selling lifestyle. And if you're getting into a rut or you you feel like you're getting stagnant, you know maybe you're just going through the motions of how many bedrooms, how many baths, where it's located. So just try to look at it. I think everyone should have at least one working partner so they can bounce ideas off of. You know you're going to look at something one way. Someone might look at it another way. Someone should be walking a house with you. Just doing all that kind of stuff, I think, will help. Hey, good. I was going to say, it shouldn't be your husband. <laughs> Buyer, if you're talking to buyers and you're not talking about mortgage rates today, you are missing a massive opportunity. Mortgage rates are the lowest in the last two or three years. If you want to, you could reach out to clients that bought a year ago. There's a lot of people refinancing right now because it was up in the mid fours probably a year ago, and there's a lot of refinancing options, and that's a great way to, to do a touch. Because you're, again, if you reach out to someone you just sold a house to, it's not because you want to sell them a house, but they might know someone who's trying to sell a house, right? So you want to stay in touch with them with quality information in the industry that you're going to help with. Now, don't tell them that the Fed might lower rates later this year, so mortgages might go lower. <laughs> don't say that, but talk about how they're currently at their lowest. And then four, and then this is just community outreach. This is just looking at your general model, right? Sponsorships. But we as a company, we want to go 
more on the hyper local, right? So whether it's a school, whether it's a, you know, like a baseball program or something, we think signs popping up there are going to be really important. We, you know, I, I feel like as a company, we do a really good job. You know, we're in like 25 different magazines and papers and, and all over the place. But I want to make sure we're getting into hyper local. And I think that that's where you guys can do a really good job. What's your passion? And that leads into this one is memberships. Again, if you feel like your business is kind of stale or not moving, what memberships are you involved in? Are you a leader of any organization? Are you on board meetings? That is how you get to meet a lot of people. Are you on a civic association? Because now people have to come to you. You're not going to them with anything. If you're in some kind of leadership role, people are coming to you. And that's a much better position to be in. And then finally, marketing efforts. That's like the whole package. Social media, uh, every three months, honestly, you should, you should go back and look in your bio and just look from a high level, what are you posting? You know, and if it's 50% party pictures and 20% listings, you know, maybe you need to rechange your um, your portfolio unless that's the client you're after, which is completely fine. And then also direct <laughs> mail. You know, we talk about direct mail a lot too. We, I think that direct mail is still a player and I think it's still important. That's everything. Yeah. Thank you. Wasn't that great information? Great it's going to come out to you. It'll, It'll be in the minute. It'll be in the minute, so you will have it. Um, anything else? Y'all have a terrific day. Area 16 um, and uh, the inner loop market area. Uh, can't speak. The inner loop market meeting is right now. And um, where is Diane? There she is. Diane's going to tell us all about um, West Lane. So y'all stay. And if you're not staying for the interlude meeting, which I hope you all are, scoot out real quick. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.